talked about it earlier, how to make a slab. I've made a slab ready. Uh, you can press cloth into it to get a texture. You can press a stamp into it. You can find a natural object and get texture. So, lots of things you can do as far as the surface goes. Handles can vary. Size. You may want something really large or you may want something very small. The handle needs to relate to the size of the cup. You know, this is a one finger cup. Two fingers would be just too big for this little cup. Well, this is a good even three finger cup. Cups can be more decorative. Handle kind of sticks out a little far, but it's kind of interesting to look at. Also, the foot doesn't need to be cut perfectly round. You could use some extra slab and create a different kind of foot on your piece. The clay can be beveled and attached so the form is even all the way around. It can be overlapped like this one where the clay was overlapped when it was attached. It makes it a little bit thicker there but creates an interesting design on the back. It can be squished, it can be irregular, it can have an irregular handle. This is up to you. So to start with, I've made a slab. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. And remember, the slab is usually not even all the way through. It's usually thinner on the edges than in the middle. And remember, I used a couple sticks to roll the slab out. I put a stick on either side and rolled the clay until I got it just absolutely even. Now, I want to put a texture into this one, and now is the time to do it while it's still plastic, while it's flat. Also, I'm not going to cut it until after I've put the texture in, because when you push the texture into it, it can stretch it out and change the shape. So I'm going to start just by marking where I want the lip to be. And I'm going to leave the top edge a little line there so I can have a smooth drinking top. And I'll square this off after I put the texture in. But that's where I'm going to be putting my marks. This is a stamp that I made out of clay. I carved it out of a piece of clay. I fired it once and now it's bisque fired and it doesn't stick. And you get a nice sharp definition. Okay, I've got my pressing. Now I need to trim it down and find a form that I'm going to fit it around. I have to decide how tall I want it to be. Remember, clay shrinks probably about 12%. So a cup like this started out being a strip of clay 9 inches long by 4 inches high. It's now three and a half inches high. So remember these do shrink. So I'm going to start by squaring this off. And a good tool to use is a square. You can also use one of these draftsman's triangles or you can just measure on e each end. I'm going to square this end here Put 
rubbing my fingers against the edge and trimming that straight and I go down I'll go down to four inches. This is longer than your ruler. Put a longer straight edge there. Now save your little strips of clay. You will need them. Okay. That's going to be the wall of the cup. What I need to do now is find a form to wrap this clay around. Now, this is one of my favorites. It's a pool noodle. And they come in different diameters. Take a piece of paper, wrap it around, and tape it. That way, when you wrap the clay around it, it's not going to stick to this. Also, when you've finished forming the cup, you can pull this out. Because remember, the clay does shrink and it can shrink and grab onto this overnight and you wouldn't be able to get the noodle out. In fact, someone had that problem with this one. You can see they had to dig it out. You could also use a piece of cardboard tubing. One of my favorite sizes is a Pringles can. Makes for a really nice size cup. Just same idea. You could use anything that's round just as long as it doesn't have an end, an end to it that will grab onto the paper, because you do need to be able to slide that paper out. So I'm going to use this, find the flat end. Now, how much clay do I need? I have a way to measure. So what I'm going to do, just move this out of the way a little bit. Just wrap a strip of clay around it, whatever form you have, and cut it. And you want it snug, you don't want it tight. So that's the length, maybe a little bit more. I'll cut a little, just a skosh more. That's the length I want. All these little pieces ball up so you don't let them dry out. So that's my square end. Put it on there. market. I could actually get two cups out of this. Screw this off. And cut it. Just going to put that aside. So there's the cup. Option. You can overlap the clay like this and you get a seam like this. Or you can bevel the ends and to bevel the ends you could take a knife and cut it this side, turn it over and cut it the other way or take your rolling pin and just squish that in and automatically put the natural bevel on there. To get it to fit flush, turn the slab over and bevel the other side. Pushes it out a little bit, so I'm just going to trim that little extra piece off. Okay, almost ready to make it into a cup. Now remember, when you're drinking, 
you don't want a sharp edge like this. This is soft right now, it's soft clay, but once it's fired, that's sharp. So what you want, and it's also thick, what you need to do now is round this off somehow. I find the easiest way to do that, I'm just gonna turn this over so you can see that's, that's the top, is to take your finger and rub it over that edge. And to make it any, even easier, take a piece of cloth or paper towel or paper and just go over that edge a couple times with your thumb or your finger. See how it thinned it? I'm going to do the other side too. So now for my drinking lip, it looks like this, not like this. Okay, got the edges beveled, I've got the top thinned. This is going to be the bottom of the cup. I have my form with the paper around it. So I'm going to get the paper right down to the bottom. And this is going to wrap around like that. Okay. Clay sticks to itself for a little while without any help. You need to help it. The way to help it is to scratch it and slip it. So I'm just going to scratch that side, scratch that side a little bit, and I could use some joining slip, but I'm just going to make some slip on the surface with a wet brush. Just go over it a couple times. Go over both sides. And you can see it's getting slip on the surface of the brush. Just breaking that up a little bit. Now you join. Now the reason you do the form is you can push against it. If you don't have that form, the cup will go all over the place. Now you can come back and put texture back in there. I like the randomness of this. Also, this is where I'm going to be putting the handle. So, turn it over gently. Remember, the more you handle it, the more deformed it's going to be. You may like that. So, I have all this extra clay. I'm going to make this the bottom. So, let's see if I have enough. Let's put it on there. Oh, yeah, I have plenty. I'm going to put the pattern on the bottom and I'm going to put the inside smooth so it's nice to clean and nice to drink out of. Now at this point you may need to make decisions. You could leave extra clay out there and make that into a more interesting foot. I have even taken and made a handle out of this extra clay. That's a little small. You'd have to go bigger and plan ahead a bit. Right now I'm just going to reattach it. So scratch around the outside to know where to score and slip. Take it off gently and give a little bit of a score and some water. I just go around and around and around and around. Turn your cup over. Do the same thing to the bottom here. Just get a little slip working.
This is plastic clay, so you can put it together pretty directly. You don't need a lot of slip. Okay, get it onto that base, and then grab it with both hands, tap it gently, and turn it. You can even roll it around on the edge just to get that bottom joined well. You can turn it over, tap it a little bit just to really guarantee that seam. And I recommend putting it on a board, a piece of cardboard, something, something that you can move around without squishing the clay. Now you decide what to do with the foot. So I'm going to just trim this right to the edge here. And all pots are made in stages. This is the plastic stage. You can press into it like I did. You can form it. It's best to wait a little while to finish it up. So now I'm just going to clean that bottom edge. And look, you could use something like this, a credit card. Get that nice and clean. Use your fingers. Just make sure that join and that seal is really good there. So once you're pretty happy with that, take out the form. Take the form out because, remember, this shrinks and can crack. You can leave the paper in, or I usually just take it out. Now you have that top edge. You can take a sponge and, and your finger or your chamois leather. Round that off. Get it so you're really happy with it. The inside, you can take your brush and go around that seam. The seam on the inside here, you can leave, because remember the glaze is going to cover that up. Or you can spend some time working it. So I'm going to take the end of the stick and just blend that in just a little bit on the inside. The less you handle it at this point, the better. You want to keep it round. So, all these little scraps of clay, take them, but don't squish them up right away because they're a little, little hard right now. They've firmed up a bit. They tend to crack a bit. I like to recycle as I go. So, the simple way to recycle all these little scraps if it's plastic, really plastic, just ball it up and put it back in your bag. If it's kind of getting a little bit firm, what you can do is take it before squishing it up, dip it in some water, and squeeze it out. And once you've squeezed it out, wrap it up in some plastic. And in a little while, that'll firm, get soft again. The other thing you could do is wrap it up in the towel, in a damp towel, and leave it overnight. And then the next day, you can wedge it up, and it'll be back to being nice plastic clay. Okay. That's the basics of making a cup. I'm going to do another, where I go over adding handles and finishing it off. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.